I think it's 100% a technical move in nature because typically we see these declines at points in which no major fundamental event has occurred that might precipitate it. And so it is a technical move. It's just like 2000. We saw it hit 2003 the other day, and then it came down from there. Did anything change in the underlying fundamental forces that took it to 2000? I would have to say no. If anything, those events have escalated. Well, why would they need to back it up with gold? Because the dollar is such a dominant force and the accepted currency of choice, the dollar has been going up. Why has it been going up? Well, one, yields are going up. But because it is still to this day considered to be the safest of any of the currencies, it is a safe haven asset. What other currency could you say that about, except maybe a Swiss franc, but not on a large scale? Whoever controls the currency, whichever currency is dominant, that country gains an enormous amount of power. And that's what China wants. Right. But they they don't, but the the backing of the, the, so the the backing of their digital yuan, I mean, why can't they just back that to the yuan? Well, I guess that because the yuan is pegged to the dollar, right? Is that, was that what you're saying? They need to completely de dollarize? That's correct. But let me ask you something. Is the, uh, is the Chinese currency fiat or is it backed by something legitimate? Well, it depends how you define legitimate. <laughs> a legitimate in that it is a fiat currency was my point. It, it um, is it's backed by the faith of the government, but it's not backed by any asset, whether it's cattle, silver, gold. It's still worth what you think it's worth because you trust the Chinese government to make good on their promise which was right. a, a position that was once only held by the U.S. dollar. Right. But that's, that, that argument applies to any fiat currency, right? You, so you're saying that a digital currency should, in theory, be better off not being pegged to the underlying fiat of that domestic country. It should be pegged to an asset like gold. If the plan is for that currency to become a dominant player in the world market. Interesting. Okay. You know what I'm just thinking? Let's say you're right. Let's say you've got the major central banks creating central bank digital currencies backed by gold. What's that going to do to the price of gold? Well, the answer is obvious. Um, That would be highly supportive of gold. Okay. And the reason being is because... How supportive, Gary? (laughs) Well... If, if, if you're going to back a currency with gold, that means you're going to require more gold in the central bank of that country. If you purchase more gold, supply and demand. If, if the demand becomes higher and the supply remains constant, what happens to price? It goes up. Okay. That's a good point. So maybe then, maybe Gary, I'm thinking, should this happen? I'm not saying it well, but should this happen? Uh, people will, retail investors will, will, will start flocking into gold as well. Then hence boosting demand for gold. You don't really want, I'm just, if you're a government, you don't really want an asset that's volatile. You don't want investment demand pushing up the price one day and then maybe falling, you know, 20% the next month. Um, you know, gold represents stability, but if everyone's flocking into it, you're going to see a huge influx of capital. Hence, price appreciation. Maybe that's not what the government wants because then your currency is by default more expensive as well, right? Absolutely correct. But can you think of another asset that you could back a fiat currency with that would give it more weight or more credibility than gold? You're putting me to the test today, Gary. I feel like I'm going well, back to school. <laughs> yeah, once in a while, I've got to. You know, you always do that to me. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> the, bottom, the bottom line is you are absolutely correct. Um, but that would be a byproduct of wanting world dominance. And part of world dominance is controlling the currency. All right. All right. I think that's, uh, I think that's a very interesting thesis. So uh, that aside, because it's not happening right away, and we're speculating as to whether or not these CBDCs could be backed by gold, but that aside, what are the short-term charts showing you about the gold price in the intermediate term? 
Well, the, the chart that I have on the screen looks at various price points in terms of resistance. Now that we've broken below 65, which was former support, 1929. Above that, I see resistance at 2000 and then at 2016. Also 85 now that we've broken below that. Those are the key levels to watch on a technical basis. $2,000. All right. Now, going back to my initial point uh, at the start of the interview, this momentum that we saw since the beginning of April, how likely is that to continue? Resistance, I mean, breach resistance of $2,000. I mean, you've stated the resistance, but we're talking about uh, a breach now and a sustained move upwards. How likely is that to happen? Under the assumption that gold continues to trade as it has with peaks and valleys, periods of price ascent and price decline, overall gold will move higher. I'm not saying straight up, but I am saying that the value will continue to grow. My long-term prognosis is for it to take out the former record high at 2088. And that might sound far-fetched, but realize just recently we hit $10 shy of that price point. Yeah. It's been, you know, I'm just looking at the chart. It's been twice now in the last two years that gold touched above $2,000, but failed to sustain that level for any significant period of time or break above that significantly, right? Once in August 2020, and then I'm looking at the chart now, back in March, it, it moved up above $2,000 as well. Now, I'm just wondering whether or not this is some sort of psychological level that people cannot, investors cannot see gold moving up much higher above $2,000. Or maybe there's a technical reason as to why uh, gold just stalls at that level. Can you explain? I believe you hit the nail on the head. What happens at a certain new price high or approaching a recent price high is technically sellers come into the market, whether they're covering shorts, and they bid the precious yellow metal lower. I think it's 100% a technical move in nature because typically we see these declines at points in which no major fundamental event has occurred that might precipitate it. And so it is a technical move. It's just like 2000. We saw it hit 2003 the other day and yeah. then it came down from there. Did anything change in the underlying fundamental forces that took it to 2000? I would have to say no. If anything, those events have escalated. Yes. And so how can they escalate and yet gold have pressure to move down? I believe it is market technicians, short-term traders pulling profits. What are these numbers you've marked in the chart? I'm just curious. Two, three, four, and five. Are those inflection points? Uh, when you look, oh, you mean the longer-term chart? No. What that is, is a basic Elliott wave count. 